All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about buying a power supply for your ham shack. This video is really targeted to new hams or hams who are buying their first power supply. Before we get started, I did want to say that down here, there are some buttons, a like button, a comment button, a subscribe button. Go ahead and click them. It'll make you happy. Now let's get started. All right, so hopefully everybody made it back. What I have here is people ask, what do I need when we're talking about power supplies? And really the challenge is that new hams are hams building their first ham shack, which is a room full of equipment uh, where you're gonna spend countless hours. Um, they're often faced with a dilemma of powering, safely powering their equipment. And hams will often choose between batteries or power supplies for this task. Today, we are talking about power supplies. So you may be asking yourself, what is a power supply? And what a power supply is, it's an electronic device that converts AC power to DC power. So alternating current to DC current. And it delivers amperage to your radio equipment. Most importantly, it maintains consistent voltage under load, typically 13.8. So radio equipment is designed to operate at a certain voltage. And then it has a variance. So it'll say 13.8 volts plus or minus 15%. So that means you can go 15% higher, 15% lower. But what's really important here is, is that when you use your radio, when you're keying up and you're talking, especially on modes like single sideband, the power draw that your radio is doing from your power supply fluctuates. It goes up and down, up and down, up and down. And with lower quality batteries, lower quality power supplies, or power supplies that aren't even designed for ham radio, one of the challenges the hams have is, is that that power supply, the voltage, the output voltage will fluctuate as current is drawn from the equipment as it's placed under load. And when this happens, you put your radio gear at risk. So it's important to get a power supply that's reliable and then can maintain the voltage uh, standard that is set out for your radio. And we're gonna talk more about that as we go through this presentation. Now you can go really deep on this conversation when you talk about linear power supplies and switching power supplies. When you go looking for a power supply, you know, you're gonna see linear and you're gonna see switching. Linear power supplies were more popular back in the olden days. And I probably shouldn't say back in the olden days, but they were more popular earlier on in ham radio than they are now. Most folks that I know are using switching power supplies. Now, I'm sure somebody's going to come along and say, hey, I've been using linear power supplies for 35 years and I'll use nothing else. And that's fantastic. I'd love to hear all about it uh, down below. And I'm not going to get too deep into the differences, the technical differences between these two, but we are going to talk about some generalizations. It'll help you make your choice. So when you talk about linear power supplies, basically they use a large transformer that converts AC to DC. As a result of this, linear amplifiers tend to be larger and heavier. So they're kind of big and bulky. Uh, what's nice about linear amplifiers is they're RF quiet meaning they don't produce a lot of noise that could cause interference when you're operating your radio. Um, they are less efficient and they are harder to cool. Those transformers heat up and they get warm. Um, and then so you lose some of your, your energy, not the energy being delivered to your radio, but you're using energy, you're losing energy that's being consumed by your power supply. And generally speaking, they're more expensive. And when you take a look at switching power supplies, and almost everybody I know uses switching power supplies, and that's what I use. I'm on my second switching power supply, the first one I had for five years, um, and only replaced it because I got a, I got a demo unit. Um, switching power supplies, they include an oscillator that uh, converts your AC current to DC current. Um, these things are smaller and lighter, and they can be, they can be quite small. Um, but the drawback is, is that that oscillator generates RF noise. So when you talk about RF noise as being generated by your power supply, it can be present on some or many frequencies or in the bands that you're planning to operate. And that can cause a little bit of frustration for hams. Now there's RFI suppression techniques that you can use. People will put toroids uh, or chokes on the power supply line that actually delivers your, your current to your radio. Um, they'll put uh, choking devices on the power cord where you plug your uh, power supply into your 110 or your 220 um, electrical outlet. So there's things that you can do. And then some power supplies, and we're going to talk more about this when we talk about features, actually come with an adjustment that will change the frequency being generated 
by that oscillator. And you can do that to move that noise from the band that you're currently operating on. These are more efficient than the linear power supplies and they're easier to cool. Well, the one of the things uh, that you hear a lot of folks talk about is, is that sometimes these things will have loud fans in them. So you wanna kind of look for read reviews when you're buying a power supply for one that uh, is a little bit more quiet if that's something that kind of bothers you. Um, and they're generally less expensive than a linear power supply. So we touched on some of these earlier in the presentation, and I want to talk about features that uh, may or may not be important to you. The first one I have is adjustable input voltage. And as I mentioned, that uh, you'll get power supplies that'll have a little switch on the bottom or the back that allow you to toggle between 110 or 120, as some people will call it, and 220. Um, this is handy if you uh, travel between the United States and maybe the European countries um, where, they use a, where they use a different voltage. Or maybe you have a different type of uh, power running into your ham shack or maybe you're running 220 out there or something and you want to use that uh, for a higher power power supply. But in any event, it is a feature that you may see on some power supplies. Another one is, is is adjustable output voltage. And some hams will say, this isn't important. It's not something that I'm concerned about. Personally, I like having it. I don't really use it, but it's nice to have in the event that I need to use the power supply for something that requires something other than 13.8 volts, which is often referred to as a 12 volt system. So it's generally just a little knob on the front of the power supply that you can adjust that will adjust your output voltage. You wanna look at the rating for your power supply and it'll call it output current. And a lot of times these uh, manufacturers will just list the peak output current. So you may have a power supply that says um, rated at 25 amps, but really only consistently at a, con at a continuous level uh, delivers 20 amps. But it says on the box 25, maybe you need 23 for your radio, you buy this and now you have, now you have a problem. So pay particular question, uh, attention to continuous voltage ratings and peak voltage, I'm sorry, peak current ratings and continuous current ratings. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention for folks that do not know is, is that current is drawn from your power supply. It's not pushed. So if you have a 25 amp uh, power supply, that doesn't mean that that's being pushed to your radio all the time. It means up to that can be pulled by your radio when the radio requires it. Plenty of hands are like, I don't need a meter on my power supply. I'm a meter nerd. I like to have meters. So I want to look at my power supply and I want to be able to see what current is being consumed by my radio equipment. And I want to be able to see what voltage is being delivered. Um, you can have either analog or digital displays. And we'll look at some examples. Uh, the next one is connection types. And this may or may not be important to you as well. Uh, some use banana jacks, some use spade terminal connectors, some use these connectors where you just push down on a little spring-loaded switch and stick a wire in there. Uh, but my favorite ones use Anderson power poles. I use Anderson power poles on all my equipment. If you're unfamiliar with Anderson power poles, I've got a video all about it. You should check it out after this video. The last thing is the noise adjustment that we talked about earlier. And as I mentioned on some switching power supplies that generate RF noise, you will see a knob that you can use to move the noise from the frequency that you may be using on your ham radio to a different frequency to reduce that interference. So a common question comes up, it says, well, what do these things cost? And uh, I would estimate that if you're looking for a decent power supply that's gonna give you uh, 20 to 25 amps of current, uh, you're gonna be spending around 150 bucks. That, that's what I would look at for a budget. But what I wanted to illustrate here is a conversation around price versus quality. Now, a lot of people say, well, you get what you pay for. And that's true in radio like it is with everything else. But what I wanted to say is, is that if you buy a $300 power supply, that doesn't mean it's necessarily twice as good as a $150 power supply or three times as good as a $100 power supply. It is an exponential chart that we use to explain this. And the more you spend, the less quality you get as you move further up the scale. So the difference between a $75 power supply and a $150 uh, power supply is greater when you go double the cost than if you go from 150 to 300. If you have opinions on the matter that differ, go ahead and post them below, I'd love to hear about it. The folks will say, well, what do I need? I don't really know what I need. Um, and what I would say, the first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that you're buying a power supply that fits your budget. Don't go hog wild and spend a bunch of money on a power supply that will impact your ability to buy other gear that you may need or want. The other one is, is that you have to make sure that your power supply meets your power requirements. Um, 
You don't want to get something that's going to underpower your radio. If you do, you're going to have to operate your radio at a lower wattage than, uh, than you are capable of doing. And that's going to be a frustrating experience. You also want to make sure that uh, your radio meets your functional requirements. And I'll put this a little bit further down on the list because you may say, I want to have dual digital meters. And then when you start to look at the price of some of these power supplies, you may say, well, the dual digital meters don't really fit my budget. So maybe I'll compromise and I'll get a single analog meter, that kind of thing. Um, the other one is, is that you want to try to pad in uh, some capability on this power supply to facilitate future growth. So anybody who's been a ham for a little while will tell you that they have more gear now than they originally thought that they were going to have when they became a ham. So what you don't want to do is end up with a shelf full of power supplies because you bought a smaller, I don't know, 5 or 10 amp power supply to, to work with your 25-watt uh, dual-band radio. And then now you're looking at stepping into a 100-watt uh, HF radio. Now you're going to have to buy another power supply. It's uh, pretty pretty cost effective to go ahead and just look at around the 25 amp uh, power supply when you start off, pay the 150 bucks, then maybe buy a hundred dollar power supply, and then have to go and buy the 150 dollar power supply a year or 18 months later. So when picking out your power supply, it's really important for you to check the user manual for the equipment that you're going to be using. So this is an excerpt from the IC7300 manual, and it shows you how to connect your power supply. And it also talks a little bit about your power requirements. So here it says uh, up here in the upper left-hand corner, um, DC, so we talked about dire uh, direct current, 13.8 volts, capacity at least 21 amps. So now knowing those specifications and how this connects, it'll help me determine what I need from a power standpoint, but also what I need from a feature standpoint or connector standpoint to make this as seamless and easy as possible. Now here's an excerpt from the Yaesu FT-M400 uh, uh, DR user manual. And you're going to have to look at your manual, and you're going to probably have to look in a couple of different places. But here at the bottom of this chart, you can see that it shows your current consumption uh, as an approximation. And then you can see on TX, which is transmission or broadcasting, as some folks call it, that you're going to go all the way up to 10.3 amps when you are on the 440 band operating digitally. So then you would look to get uh, probably somewhere around a 15 amp power supply. Hopefully that clears it up a little bit for folks. Always check your user manual. I'm not trying to be a, uh, one of these people who's like RTFM, son, RTFM. But the manual's there for a reason, and it provides really good info. So here are some examples of power supplies that I just wanted to talk through. This is a very popular uh, power supply, the Samlex Power. It's a SEC uh, 12, which is 12 volt. Uh, 35M, so I'm going to assume that 35M is for 35 uh, peak uh, current delivery. And the reason I'm showing you this one is, is this is an example of dual analog meters. You can see the amp meter and the volt meter, um, and they're analog, and there's a power switch on the front. Very simple, basic, clean power supply. Now, this is a Tech Power TP30 SWI. Uh, the reason I'm showing you this one is it combines your volt and your amp meter. Um, a meter, I don't know exactly how you say that, into a single meter, and there's a switch to toggle between the both. Uh, also, you can see on the upper right-hand corner of this power supply, there's that noise offset that we discussed earlier, along with some power poles below that to make it easy to connect your radio equipment. Um, I don't own this power supply, but I like it. Now, here's a little bit of a cheaper example. This is a 4.5 amp power supply, so you would use this in really lower-powered radio uh, scenarios. But the reason I'm showing you this one is it actually has two USB ports on the front of it. USB ports are another feature that I did not talk about that may be important to you or important in your ham shack. It also uses what people refer to as a cigarette lighter plug um, because the cigarette lighters used to be in plugs like that in cars in the United States. And then last, here's another tech power. And the reason I'm showing you this one is it has the DC outlet or the cigarette lighter plug. This is a 10 amp uh, power supply. And it has a single meter with dual display in a digital format, which is pretty cool. Um, it also has a voltage adjusting uh, knob and a noise offset knob. So there's a lot of choices out there that make uh, buying a power supply kind of confusing. I'm hoping that this video helps. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below. And I want to say thanks to everybody for watching. I really appreciate it.